Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to my channel Hunger Knocks and today we're going to be releasing a week-long budget meal plan. So the idea for this is that we're going to be making three meals a day, seven days a week for two people with a budget cap of $100. And I can tell you that that's a little bit harder um, than you might think. And the reason I know that is because right from the beginning, we went over our budget by 10 bucks. Uh, so we actually ended up spending $110. But there's some things that we can do to mitigate some of those costs. I think like not buying organic eggs or picking up the exact amount of protein that we needed instead of buying extra just because it was conveniently packaged that way. Um, so um, I just want to get into this and go over kind of what we're going to do. We're going to start off with um, the items that we bought the way that we prepped them, and then the production of our meals throughout the week. Um, and that uh, that's gonna be, you know, something that is hopefully after the prep is very easy to do throughout the week and that, you know, is gonna come out with good items for you. Something that you're gonna enjoy eating and not just be like pasta with tomato sauce for three days, you know, or something junky like that. But either way, hopefully you like the video. It's informative, instructive, and inspires you to, you know, kind of help put a cap on some of your food costs, you know, and some of your food waste that potentially is, you know, sucking money away from you. So go ahead and check out the video. And if you like what you see, give it a like and subscribe. And if we get a good response, maybe we'll do some more of these. So, thanks guys. All right. So here we have a list of all the items that we picked up for our week long budget plan. Don't worry about writing everything down. I'll have it all listed down in the description of this video. Let's go over some of the items that we picked up and where I thought we could have saved some money also. So here we have some thick sliced ham. Probably could have just went with bacon and it would have been way cheaper. That was actually kind of expensive. We have our roast beef right here. It's pretty good. Um, our cheddar, slice of cheddar cheese here. We have a slice of Swiss cheese here. Our slices of pepper jack cheese here. We have our deli turkey meat right here. Then we have our two loaves of bread, our pack of bagels, our two cartons of eggs, our crinkle cut fries, our potatoes, our drying, a box of penne noodles. We have our shredded cheddar. We have a pack of pork right here. Then we have some steaks that were on sale. We have three packs of chicken breasts. There's two breasts in each pack. Let's see, one pound of ground beef. Went to the deli and got Looks like eleven dollars worth of bacon should have been twenty slices of bacon. So we have some rice, tortillas, three cans of black beans. We have a pack of Idahoan instant potatoes. Our ramen noodles there, the Nissen ramen noodles. We have mushrooms, lettuce, tomatoes, onion, jalapenos, celery, carrots, cilantro, garlic, bell peppers, and bananas. Also, looks like a pint of heavy cream, and we have a little tub of sour cream right there. That's basically our items. All right, we're going to start off with our zucchini, and we're just going to slice those in half and then cut them into half moons. Just down there like that. Throw those into its own little Tupperware. For that, we're going to go to our carrots. We're just going to peel those, and we're going to make some carrot sticks, and then with uh, a little bit of the carrots, we're just going to chop them up um, into like little diced carrots. But honestly, we didn't use the diced carrots or this diced celery that's coming up. We just really didn't put it in our food plan. So you can skip that if you want. But we have our jalapenos here, which we're just going to thin slice both of those up. Use those for garnishes and just add a little heat to our dishes throughout the week. We got our tomatoes. We're going to core those and then slice them. We save the end pieces. The end pieces we're going to dice up as well. So we'll get rid of the cores, but dice those ends. We'll just rack all that stuff up into its separate containers. And then after our tomatoes here, give yourself a wipe. We got our bell peppers. We're going to do these a couple ways. We're going to make some julienne pieces. We're going to make some medium-sized dice and then some small-sized dice. So as soon as we go through, the julienne are going to be for our fajitas. Small dice are going to be for, like, our beans that we're going to be cooking up. And the medium dice ones are going to be for like our chicken curry that we're going to do this week. Just kind of blow through those and rack them into different containers. We have our onions right here. So our yellow onion. We're just going to do a small dice on those. Put it with our diced bell peppers for beans. Small dice again. Keep separate. Use those for a pasta. 
have our red onion here. We're going to keep it whole and we're going to make some slices, whole slices for sandwiches and other things like that. We're going to take some of our red onion and julienne it, and that'll be for our fajitas as well. We're going to dice up the rest of that. Our cilantro, we're just going to bust through the top. Make sure you don't get that little uh, piece of attachment that goes on there. Cut up, keep that separate. We have our celery sticks here. We're just going to strip those down and cut ourselves some celery sticks. Then we're also just going to do some diced up celery that we're going to add with our diced up carrots. I guess the idea was to do like a, a rice pilaf type thing with it, but just didn't work it into the week, so that's just kind of extra. So we have our garlic here, which we're going to break down and shell it all, and then we're just going to slice our garlic up. Garlic's kind of a pain to work with. Sometimes it's just easier to buy pre-shelled garlic. I don't buy the minced garlic that's in water oil. That stuff is garbage. Don't do that. It doesn't taste good. But just go ahead and shell off all the outside and then we're just going to slice those up. And we're going to mix those throughout some of our prepped items here, which when we go over everything that we've prepped at the end here, you'll see where it went. But it's going to go in with some onions and go in with some onions and bell peppers. Just kind of going to go into a couple of dishes. Um, so we'll just split it up amongst the things that we prep. But definitely more of a labor-intensive item. But got to have garlic. It's just too good. All right, once we get through all of our veggies, we're going to switch over to our meats. Oh. Here we got our lettuce. Diced up lettuce. So chopped for our salad, and then we have the whole lettuce leaves that we set aside. We're just going to rack those into plastics, a little paper to help with the moisture. Now here we go on the meat. So we're just going to steal a little bit off the end of our bacon there. I use those as bacon lardons for some breakfast, and then we'll save the rest as just our sliced bacon. That steak we got, we're slicing up. We set that aside, that'll be for our steak fajitas. So we've got our pork here, which we're going to slice off. Um, some pieces that we're going to use just for our dinner, just some like grilled pieces of pork, and then the rest we're going to just dice up. I'm going to keep all this in the same container. This pork's all the same, so can hang out with each other, save a little space. Just rack all that in there. Get a quick little rinse. And the next thing we got our chicken. We're just going to fillet those in half, and then we're just going to strip them down. Just kind of get those ready to go for our chicken curry or for um, our chicken pasta or anything like that that we got coming up. Whole, whole pieces we're going to save for our chicken salad. All right, for our prep recap, we're going to go over these items. We've got our bacon lardons. We have diced red onion with sliced garlic. We have our diced tomatoes. Diced carrots and celeries, which we don't end up using, but they're there. Diced yellow onion, sliced garlic, and diced bell peppers. Diced yellow onion and sliced garlic. We have our sliced jalapenos. Our chopped cilantro. We have our sliced tomatoes. Our julienne bell peppers and red onions. Carrot sticks, submerged in water. That'll keep them fresh for longer. We have our sliced red onion. We have medium diced bell peppers and yellow onions with garlic slices. Our half moon sliced zucchini. Celery sticks, also in water. That'll help keep those fresh as well. Our chopped red leaf lettuce. And then our whole red leaf lettuce. We have our whole chicken breasts. We have our diced chicken breast. Sliced strips of our steak and diced and sliced pork loin, just all in one. So we'll rack everything up in our fridge, nice and organized. Notice I also toss my bread in there. It just helps breads keep a little bit longer. But that's our that's our stuff for the week. Alright, it's Monday morning, rise and shine. Let's make some French toast. So we're going to start off by cooking eight pieces of bacon. Notice there's a little extra there. Four of those are going to be for our BLTs tomorrow. But anyways, let's get started. First, we're going to make our French toast batter. 
Um, this is just going to be two eggs with a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then we're going to do a dash of nutmeg and a dash of cinnamon. And then we're going to add in a splash of heavy cream. And we're just going to mix all that up uh, really well. Um, if you're like me and have little gizmos around, you know, I just use a little mixing stick on it also just to make it really mixed up. But you don't have to. You can just mix it with a fork or a whisk or whatever and it'll be fine. But let's pop that bacon in the oven. Um, doing it at 320 degrees and it's going to take about 14 minutes or so. So get that going and we'll prep some other stuff while we're while that's cooking. Get our bananas going and then, yeah, your bread, you're just going to... Um, Soak it in your batter there, get it nice and hydrated, and then set it down on the flat top. I add a little bit of oil just to help it cook. See your bacon's, bacon's getting real close, so we're gonna go ahead and just plate it up. Looks like that bacon's probably two minutes out or so. I love bacon in the oven. It's so much better than just in the pan. But get our French toast there, split it up. We're gonna top it with our bananas there. We're going to throw two slices of bacon on there and finish it with oh. some syrup. And we're going to do that two times for both of our breakfasts. And that's Monday morning handled. So super easy. Doesn't take that long. Minimal effort. And it is tasty. So we're going to hop right into making our Monday lunch, which is going to be a roast beef bagel sandwich. We're going to start off by throwing a little oil on that same flat top that we did our French toast on. And we're going to toast up our bagel buns right there as those are working we'll just get ready to assemble our sandwiches we're going to be using three pieces of roast beef for each one and one piece of swiss and we're going to toss down some uh, mayo mustard lettuce tomato and onion so it takes about four minutes to make this and just package it up and take it with you for wherever you're going or if you're like me, I'm just going to eat it at home later later that day. So, you know, put everything back up when you're done and enjoy this nice, tasty roast beef bagel sandwich. It's really good. Again, super easy. So, can't complain about that. All right, for our Monday night dinner, we're going to be making just a little ramen bowl here. So, go ahead and take a look at the ingredients that we got laid out. We're going to be using that our ramen pack, some cilantro, jalapenos, mushrooms, our medium diced onions and bell peppers, some two other pieces of roast beef, some onions, and four eggs. We're going to need two pots of water heating up and one little pan for sauteing in. While that's getting ready, I go ahead and get my eggs ready by pulling them out so that I can drop them all into the hot water at once so we can get the same time cook on all the eggs. We'll do a quick little chop on our roast beef there and Looks like we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and drop in our um, our noodles right there and let those get going. Those are going to take only about three minutes or so to cook. I should say on the package exactly how long, but while those are cooking, we'll start sauteing up those mushrooms, bell peppers, and onions. And we're going to go ahead and drop our eggs into the boiling water as well. While everything's working... Just add a little oil in your saute pan and just make sure that we're really getting it. Um, I'll just take that sauce packet out, put it in a bowl, and steal a little bit of that pasta water and kind of just get the mixture ready for it. But once your noodles are all done and you see that our eggs are done, so I'm going to go ahead and pull those out right now. Once you see that everything's done, we can just start plating up. So first thing, we're just going to toss our pasta in there, give that a nice little mix, drop our two eggs or a little bit of roast beef, split those sautéed veggies, top it with some fresh onion, jalapeno, cilantro, and garnish with a little sesame seed. So easy dinner, probably takes about five minutes, six minutes to make, and you're set. So hopefully you enjoyed that Monday meal prep. Um... And it was just easy, you know, pretty straightforward and satisfying. So have a good night. We'll get ready for Tuesday.
All right, good morning. Today is Tuesday, and we're going to be making bagel breakfast sandwiches. We're going to be using two bagels, two eggs, two slices of tomato, some red onion, and we're going to be using one slice of our ham and two pieces of Swiss cheese for this, as well as a little butter to toast up our bagels with. I've got the oven set on broil, which I'm going to use to toast our bagels. That's mostly because I don't have a toaster, so this is what I got to do. But while those are toasting, we're gonna heat up um, two other pans. One's gonna be a bigger pan for sa uh, grilling up our ham, tomatoes and onions, and the other one's just gonna be a little egg saute pan. So we'll cut our ham in half, one half for each bagel sandwich, and we'll just set that down on top of a little butter in our pan and season our veggies and everything and let things cook up. As those are working, I'm kind of turning over the tomatoes and making sure the onions get some heat. I'll spread those on top of the ham. Rack some cheese on there. That first egg should be just about done. Go ahead and slide that onto one stack and start cooking the other egg. Put a lid on it that way for sure the cheese gets nice and melty and good. And I've been more of a fan lately of popping my yolks on the bagel sandwich just so that it's not so messy. I seem to just make such a mess when that yolk just pops itself. So I'd rather do it beforehand and control that. But a little mayo mustard on there is what I like. Stack them up, cut them in half, and that's breakfast. Done and done. We're gonna hop right into our Tuesday lunch and start making our BLT sandwiches. For the sandwich, we do have our four pieces of bacon that we cooked off yesterday that we're gonna use. And everything else is lined out. So we have our bread, lettuce, tomato, onions, little slices of jalapeno, cause I like a little spiciness on my sandwich. Uh, mayo, then we have some salt, pepper, and a little garlic powder over there in our seasoning dish. We're gonna spread a little mayo on our bread and we're gonna to toss that in our oven that is still set to broil from our breakfast and get a little toast um, going on our bread. Mayo, mayo works as a toasting thing. It's just basically oil for the most part, so it'll work good. We'll heat up our bacon real quick and we're gonna take our seasonings and mix it in with our leftover mayo that we had right there. And we're going to add a little mustard in there too. And that's going to be kind of our spread for the sandwich. Something a little bit different. But once our bread is nice and toasty, we'll go ahead and make our sandwiches here. You'll notice that I'm putting that spread onto the lettuce. And the idea here is to not get it all over the bread and make it soggy by the time that you eat it. It kind of acts as a wall. Then we just add our tomatoes, onions, jalapenos, our bacon, right onto the lettuce, and that's it. That's your BLT sandwich. Pretty straightforward. Once again, coming through with the easy meals, especially for a lunch, something to make right after breakfast so you can take it and go. Sweet Tuesday dinner time. Let's... Let's get to it. We're going to be making some steak fajitas tonight, along with a side of rice and beans. Let's take a look at our ingredients that we have here. We have our steak, our onions, peppers, garlic, our bell peppers, onions, cilantro, some seasonings, rice, tortillas, beans, sour cream. And not there is cheese, shredded cheese that we picked up, but we'll use it. So our seasonings right here, we have uh, paprika, cumin, salt, pepper, and a little bit of uh, granulated garlic. That'll be for our beans. And this is gonna go in our rice, which is gonna be some turmeric and paprika. So add a little bit of flavor as well as some color to it. So, that's all our stuff. Oh, here I go. Jalapenos, nice. Sliced jalapenos, and use that too. There's that cheese I was talking about. But this is the pans that we're gonna need, one for cooking tortillas, one for our fajita stuff, and one for our beans. So you kind of see the setup that we're working with. And then obviously we're going to be using a rice cooker, a little Instapot in the, back, in the back there. We're going to do two cups of rice, which we're going to rinse thoroughly and toss in there. 
And while we're getting ready to rinse that, we're gonna open up our cans of black beans. And that silver pan, that silver saute pan back there, we go ahead and start cooking our peppers, onions, and garlic. Saute those up right now. And while those are cooking, we're gonna go ahead and start rinsing our rice off and get that going. Once it's thoroughly rinsed, we're gonna add it into our, our Instapot. And I'm gonna add our seasoning. Don't forget to add about a tablespoon of salt in there. And we're gonna steal a scoop of those peppers and onions that are cooked before we add these beans in. So get all of our beans emptied out, rinsed off, and we're gonna add those into our sauteed veggies. We're just gonna let those cook. We'll probably add about a half cup of water in with that, and then we'll just season with salt and pepper. While that stuff's working, check out the fam as they're looks like taking a nap. I don't know, sleepyheads. Sleepy has is ready for dinner. But that's the fam hanging out as we make this food. So once our rice and beans are about there, we're gonna toss our steak in our pan. If it's ready, our skillet there. And start cooking that and try to get a little bit of a sear on our meat. The whole time in the back, I'm working tortillas and I'm popping those down in the oven, which I kicked on just for a minute to get warm, and then I turned it off. It's really just to hold the tortillas warm. Once our meat's ready, we'll add our veggies on top, and we'll heavily season with salt, pepper, and throw in a splash of uh, oil as well, just for cooking purposes. Get everything, keep it working. We want to get a little color on our veggies as well. Keep working those tortillas also. That way when we're ready to go, they're ready to go. So our rice is done. I like to open it up, take a look-see in there. We'll give it a little fluff. We'll double taste it, see if it needs a little bit of salt, pepper, anything like that. But it's just some basic basic rice, nothing too fancy. Looks like everything's just about there. That tortilla, definitely there. I'm not using that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get a new one going. But I think we're ready. So we got our rice and beans on a plate. We're going to snag our tortillas. I believe I cooked three tortillas. So for each person, so six tortillas total. Though I did waste a couple of tortillas too, so I had to toss some. But toss down some of our fajitas meat there, peppers, onions, steak. Throw in a little bit of slices of jalapeno. Throw some shredded cheese on there, some cilantro, and a dollop of sour cream. We're going to do that two times, and that's going to be dinner for the night. Really nice having everything prepped and ready to go from the beginning of the week. Makes, makes meals like this easy, enjoyable, and not a whole lot of cleanup. And when we're done, we're going to save all of our beans because we're not eating three cans of beans, that's for sure. We're going to save our beans, and you can't see it, but I saved that rice also. We'll use that later. All right, Wednesday morning. Let's make some rice atole. It's going to be our breakfast today. So we're going to start off. We've got two cups of milk, a teaspoon of cinnamon, we're going to use a teaspoon of vanilla extract, three-quarter cup of white sugar, and one cup of rice. We'll start off by rinsing our rice well. We're going to get that going in a pan on the stove, and we're going to add one cup of water. That's just to get the rice cooking, not enough water to finish it, just to get it going. While that's heating up, we're going to go ahead and get our two cups of milk going, and we're going to split our cinnamon in between the rice and the milk there. The idea is just to add some of that cinnamon flavor into the rice as it's cooking in the water. And then when our milk gets hot, we're gonna go ahead and add our sugar to our milk as well. Then we're just gonna combine them. We're gonna let those come together and just simmer and just cook it just like rice. Um, the only difference is though is that we're gonna stir this kind of frequently. Maybe, probably every like two minutes or so, we'll just go in there and give it a stir around. It's probably gonna take about 16 to 18 minutes or so before it's ready. 
all in all. But what you want to do is just kind of get it to almost porridge like texture, but where the rice is done. Having that sugar in with your milk is going to help kind of thicken that, thicken that uh, rice up. And that's it. So we got ourselves two bananas with that. We got our rice right there, and we'll just garnish it with a little bit of a uh, little bit of more cinnamon, and that's breakfast. Super easy. Again, the only thing is that you know this is a breakfast that takes potentially a little bit longer just for the time that it takes to cook the rice, but I think it's worth it. It's something different, and if you've ever had like a horchata, imagine that, but like food form. So actually something that you can eat so the, the flavors are really good i think you'll enjoy it so let's give that a go <laughs> and that is one cute kid yeah boy all right wednesday lunch we're gonna be making a chicken salad so we're just gonna grill some chicken up and throw together a salad real quick so as you can see, we got um, our two chicken breasts that we're just gonna oil, salt and pepper, get those ready to throw into a little uh, corrugated cast iron skillet. We got heating up over there in the back. And we've also got the oven on. We're gonna make some croutons real fast. So we just take uh, a couple slices of our bread and dice that up. We're just gonna add a little bit of uh, oil. I'm using a little bit of chili oil, but a little bit of uh, granulated garlic we're gonna add a little bit of salt, pepper, cumin, and mix that all up and toss it in the oven. Set the oven to 350, and it's only really gonna take about six, seven minutes to make croutons. So we got our chicken going. And we have our chopped salad mix. We have some leftover beans. Then we do have diced tomatoes, diced onions, and some of our shredded cheese that we're gonna put in there. So you just kind of mix all this stuff up in a bowl. And I don't know what kind of dressing you have extra in your fridge. I'm sure you do have some because everybody has extra dressing they don't know what to do with. Ours happen to be Caesar. But Caesar, ranch, I don't know, balsamic, whatever you want. Um, I'm sure it'll all work out. But uh, got everything going there. Looks like a chicken is just about, got some nice marks on it, just about done. Not really. Look at that. Need some more time. While that's cooking, I mean, there's not a whole lot to do. We're going to dress our salad just towards the end, you know, right before we slice our chicken up. There's no point in dressing it and letting it kind of just die. Since we already have our oven going from making those croutons, I just pull those off, pop those in the oven, and we'll let them finish in there. So you can see our croutons are finished, our salad is basically <laughs> set, ready to go. And our chicken is just um, resting over there behind us. It's finished off in the oven. There it is. We're gonna go ahead and dress our salad. Give that a nice good mix up. Slowly but surely, it'll get mixed, I swear. Once you get nice and coated, we're just gonna go ahead and throw it into some larger bowls. And the toppings that fell in the bottom, just split those in between. Then we're just gonna go ahead and toss some croutons on there and slice up our chicken. And we don't use all of the chicken here. We actually save about a quarter of the chicken, so half of a chicken breast. And we use that for later for whatever else, like in side meals, snacks, leftover meals, whatever you wanna use it for. But that's it, that's gonna be lunch for today. It's in pretty awesome chicken salad so hopefully hopefully you had time to throw this together and and enjoy it it doesn't take too long you know maybe 10 minutes but sweet enjoy guys sweet we're on the home stretch you've made it to wednesday dinner time okay we're gonna be doing some seared pork so we have the pork chops that we cut earlier. We have a little bit of uh, sugar, salt, rosemary, and butter as our seasoning, some carrot sticks, our instant mashed potatoes, two cups of milk, salt and pepper. We'll start off by seasoning up our pork chops there. Just gonna do 
Just a little bit of salt and pepper on each of those and let them hang out for a minute. Once those are nice and coated, we'll start getting our uh, uh, carrots steamed up and our milk going. So I just have a little steam basket and a pot there and a little pot in the back that's going to be for our milk. So we're just going to bring our milk up to um, just a boil and then you can turn it off and we add our instant mashed potatoes and just continually whisk those in. Um, the carrots we're going to steam. Um, that's going to take about, let's say, five minutes, five minutes or so once the water gets to a full boil, like a full steam in there. And then we're going to drain out all of the liquid from the carrots um, and then toss the carrots back in that same pot and add in that butter, sugar, rosemary um, seasoning that we had set up. And we'll just do a little bit of salt and pepper as we need. But we're not quite there yet. We'll start off right now with our porks. We'll get some little oil in that pan. And we'll just set down our porks. Just want to make sure that when you put them in, you get a nice sizzle. Like that, that oil is hot enough in that pan that it's ready to take that pork. Um, when it is, just drop it in there. And you'll notice I like to use these little splatter guards because... I try to keep my kitchen pretty clean and the stove always gets wrecked. So I think this just helps me on my cleanup being a little bit faster um, with wiping everything down after just that oil kind of just gets everywhere. But it's up to you, but that's what that is. And it also kind of helps with, uh, you know, unlike a lid, it lets moisture escape from the pan um, so that that way it's not just letting water drip down into your pan and then messing up your oil you know your sear that you're getting on your on your meat well we got a nice nice color on there on our flip so our milk is just about there in the back and our carrots are getting close to being steamed up and finished just do a little check on those I think they're about good, so let's pull out that little steam basket. I'm just going to ditch that liquid. Let's put that back on the heat, and we'll just add that butter, um, rosemary, salt, sugar, and we'll do a little pepper on there as well. Let's go ahead and toss our carrots right back in. Once that butter kind of starts to melt down, And we'll put a lid on it. This will be our nice veggie side dish right there. Oh, there's the milk. Milk's ready. Whisking in our instant mashed potatoes, which... Honestly, I've never had instant mashed potatoes until probably four months ago. And I was surprised they don't suck. And, you know, it's just something that's easy. It's, it's a dollar, you know. It definitely saves on time, too. You know, if you're a busy person, it is a good substitute. But it's not, it's not as good as a real thing, but it's good. So we got our pork there, we got our mashed potatoes and, and our carrots. And that's dinner. That's dinner for two. So hope you guys had a great Wednesday. And be ready for tomorrow morning. We'll wake up and make some more food. So enjoy. All right, good morning guys. It is Thursday and today we're gonna be making a typical breakfast. This is uh, just like a standard rice and beans breakfast. So we have our leftover rice, beans, four eggs, that other slice of ham, and then we have our tortillas. And then not shown here, we are gonna be using some of our chopped cilantro, as well as some of our uh, sliced jalapenos. So I'm taking care of the guy this morning, so he's up on the counter, because if I put him down somewhere else, he's just gonna cry. So let's keep him a little bit entertained as we make this. but. We're going to need a pan for heating up our tortillas. We're going to use this one nonstick pan that's going to do our rice, 
and our beans in there. All I'm doing is adding a little splash of water just to help hydrate it so that we can kind of steam everything in there. And then a little egg pan on the side. Um, I'm going to cook up, uh, I believe it was two, tor or two tortillas for each person, so four tortillas total. Once we're done cooking off the tortillas, I'm just going to go ahead and slap down a piece of ham right onto that uh, same cast iron skillet there. And we'll just, you know, eat breakfast. <laughs> it's really, again, since we did our prep before, there's it's not a whole lot of work. We have our leftover rice already made, our beans made, tortillas. We just buy them. All we're doing is putting a little cook on them and our eggs and ham. So should be pretty simple. One thing you can do is when you're uh, redoing your rice and beans, just maybe double check the salt on those, see if they need to get seasoned a little bit more or anything. Um, yeah, but this is just like a standard standard breakfast. Can't really go wrong with rice and beans. It's one of the staples of the world right there. So looks like we got everything basically made up, so that's it. Breakfast is ready. So this is just your your typical, you know, typical Latin American breakfast, I guess you'd call it. I don't know. I just know it as a typico. So enjoy, guys. We'll be back with some lunch here soon. All right, Thursday lunchtime, guys. We're going to be making turkey bacon wraps today. Take a look at our ingredients. We have tortillas, Swiss, tomato, onions, bacon, turkey, lettuce, mayo, mustard, everything you need for a good wrap. We're going to start off by baking off our bacon here. We're going to pop that in the oven at 320. It's going to take about 15 minutes or so. Uh, we do have extra bacon. Those four extra pieces we'll be saving for dinner tonight. We'll, we'll be doing some burgers later. But while we're waiting on our bacon to cook off, we'll go ahead and pull our turkey out. Uh, we're going to be using half of our turkey, which should be six pieces. Uh, six slices of turkey there. That's going to be three slices for each sandwich. And we're going to be using four tortillas today. That's two tortillas uh, for each wrap. Um, hold this guy because he always needs that attention. Boy just he loves it. I love to give it though. So, <laughs> um, The bacon's done. Like I said, we're going to be using two tortillas for each each one of these um, wraps. We'll go ahead and pull our bacon off there and stage it up and get it ready. Kind of go back and forth with taking care of the boy and taking care of making food. Pop those tortillas in the oven just to kind of warm them up, make them a little more, a little more malleable. But go ahead and split this out. So we got our turkey, lettuce, Onions, tomatoes, mayo, mustard, cheese, all that on there. We're just going to do our best to roll this thing up tight. Something to make Willie Nelson proud. That's it. Just going to a little grab and go turkey wrap for you. Enjoy that lunch, guys. All right. Thursday, dinner time. We're going to be making a... Uh, bacon cheeseburgers and some uh, french fries. Let's take a look, we got our fries there, uh, bread for our burger buns, uh, lettuce, onions, tomatoes, pepper jack cheese, bacon, our secret seasoning for our burgers there, which is Vander's uh, Greek seasoning, super good. Our burger meat and uh, ketchup and mustard. Start off by baking these french fries right here in the oven. We're gonna go 350, I think it's about 20 minutes, that's what it says. So we have our one pound of ground beef right here. We're gonna go ahead and shape that into a square because our buns are square, because we don't have buns. We're using just the bread that we bought, but it's gonna work out. So go ahead and season both sides with our seasoning. You can just use salt, pepper, but this Greek seasoning stuff is money. I would recommend it. It's definitely um, a good seasoning that you can use for a bunch of other stuff too, not just meats. But so we got our fries working. We're gonna turn those over, make sure we get them nice and crispy as our burgers are working right there in our, in our uh, skillet. As that stuff is cooking, 
Gonna clear some space on our fry pan. Pop those pepper jack cheeses on top. We're gonna toss that in the oven and let it finish. Give a little rinse off on our hot pan. And that bacon that we cooked for our bacon turkey wraps, leftover bacon, we're just gonna warm up and use that for our burgers as well. While those are getting warm on the side, we'll just toast some bread in the middle. Just kind of work that. Once we get some free area, we'll just add in more bread. Toast that up for our burger buns. Give a nice little flip. Toast both sides. Once you feel confident that your bread's good and that your meat's all cooked up, Pull it out and start plating up. So we've got our lettuce, onions, tomato, got a little bit of ketchup, mustard, and our burger patties right there. We slid that bacon on too and tossed in the oven as well. And that's it. Half pound burgers, which realistically is probably too much. I think you'd be just fine doing third third of a pound burgers but we're just using what we got toss some fries on that plate and that's dinner it's ready to go enjoy guys all right good morning today is friday and we're going to be making an egg and cheese bagel sandwich so what we're going to use is two bagels two eggs two slices of cheese and we will have a little butter that we're going to spread on these bagels just to toast them up over on the stove behind us, we'll have a little egg pan, and then we will be using a bigger flat cast iron skillet just to toast our bagels. Right there. Get those going. And we'll toss a little butter in our egg pan for our eggs. This is a super fast breakfast. We're talking maybe, maybe five minutes, really, to make this thing. So definitely an easy one that you can make and take with you if you need to head out real quick a little salt on there just a little seasoning for our bagel sandwich <laughs> so much to it hopefully uh, you guys got some fun plans for the weekend coming up start thinking about that Friday hopefully it's a nice day and I'm gonna go for a walk after this but that's it. That's that's breakfast for, for Friday morning. Enjoy. All right, Friday lunch. This is going to be a really quick turkey sandwich. So we're going to use our bread, pepper jack cheese, onions, tomatoes, lettuce, and turkey. Um, we're going to toss on a little bit of mayo on there and a little bit of mustard. But really, that's it. We're going to make this two times, one for me, one for my wife. But that's, all, that's all we're doing. Just... Two, literally two second lunch. Just make that, wrap it, and go. Okay, Friday dinner, and we're gonna be making some curry chicken. So this is a really fast, easy thing. The longest thing is gonna be making the rice, which I'm sure you know how to do, so you can go ahead and just throw that and get it working right now. But let's go over our ingredients real fast that we're gonna be using um, to make this dish. So we're gonna have our medium diced peppers, onions with a little bit of those shaped garlics, um, our half moon zucchinis. I'm using a little bit of red chili flake in oil, our chicken, and our seasoning right in front has yellow curry, salt and pepper. We'll start off by just sauteing our veggies up. Just try to get those nice and coated with oil, a little mix. And then we'll just add our seasonings in there. That was that yellow curry, salt, and pepper. We'll let that cook up. Clear out that center part, and we're going to add our chicken. We'll let that sit and try to get a little bit of color on the chicken. We're only using half of our chicken. The other half we're going to use for a pasta coming up. Turn that over as it goes. Once you feel like your chicken is, I would say, about 80% of the way cooked, we're gonna add a splash of uh, that heavy cream um, into our pan. And that's just kinda 
gonna help it build almost just like a sauce. We're not gonna add a whole lot, but just enough to kind of hydrate everything up and make it uh, a little bit more enjoyable as you're eating with, uh, with this rice that you made. And that's it. I mean, I would do a quick taste on it, you know, double check your salt, pepper, all that stuff, your final seasoning. And we're just gonna lay that right over some rice. And I'm actually gonna, since we have some of that chopped cilantro um, that we made, we're just gonna garnish it with a little bit of fresh cilantro. It's always nice to have something like that, you know, just to bring a, a hint of freshness to the dish. That's it, that's Friday night dinner. And again, really easy, longest thing really is, is your rice. So. Enjoy, guys. Hopefully, you're going to have a great weekend coming up. We'll start off tomorrow with uh, some breakfast. All right, good morning. It's Saturday. We're going to be making some hash brown with eggs. Start off the day by saying Say hi, hello. My boy. That's my boy again. Just hang out with him. But this is what we're going to need to start off. We've got our uh, diced bacon, four eggs, and then our pack of uh, potatoes or brine, which is basically potatoes with a little bit of uh, bell peppers. I wonder if there's onions in there. I'm not, I'm not sure what they put in there, but either way, let's get started. Get a nice hot pan to start off with with our bacon. The uh, important thing is to get your bacon fully cooked and before we put in the potatoes. We'll add a little bit of oil. It's okay if there's going to be extra bacon fat and oil. You know, the oil just helps it along. But whatever's left is going to get absorbed by these potatoes anyway. We just want to make sure that we completely render our bacon so that it's looking nice and properly cooked. And then we're just going to add some of those uh, potatoes. Now, all in all, making this breakfast... Oh, there's a little seasoning in there. There's salt and pepper. So all in all, making this breakfast, uh, it's probably going to take about 20 minutes. And that's just because we're going from a frozen potato to a fully cooked. And the idea isn't just to like, get it hot, it's to actually get a little bit of color. Yeah, do you think I'll just you a text that just has like the, the outsides of them? And you can, you don't have to go that far if you don't want to, but it's a lot better if you do. So it's definitely worth it um, having a little bit longer of a cook time. You'll notice that as I'm cooking, I'm kind of tasting um, and then seasoning as we go along. So once you feel confident that your potatoes are basically ready, we're going to just clear out the center and then we're just going to pop our eggs in there. So that was those four eggs that we had earlier. Get that ready, pop a little more oil in there. And we'll let those kind of cook up. Once the bottom gets kind of cooked, we'll go ahead and start scrambling it around. I just don't like doing that in the I kind of like to the white set up a little bit. But that's it. Let's go ahead and toss that on a plate. And that's breakfast. Garnish this guy with a little bit of cilantro. I just love cilantro. Um, also, one of the first cooks that I worked with back in the day, this guy Pepe, he told me, you eat with your eyes. If it doesn't look good, it doesn't taste good. So, you know, garnishes really help just add like a finishing touch to dishes, which I think is totally worth it. But that's it for breakfast on a Saturday morning. Hopefully you guys enjoy it, and we'll get back to you with some lunch. All right, welcome back. Saturday lunch, we're going to be making some egg salad sandwiches. To make this, we're going to be using... Our salt, pepper, mustard, mayo, some celery sticks, four eggs, and four pieces of bread. Those eggs are hard boiled, so all you gotta do is just boil some water and set the whole egg in there in the shell. It takes about seven minutes, and then cool them off and shell them. We'll go ahead and dice up our celery, and that's gonna be a flavor as well as a texture component for this. You can use other things too, like onions or pickles or whatever, but we're just using celery. So break our uh, Break our eggs up with a fork, season with salt, pepper, add a little bit of mayo, mustard. Make sure we get that nice and nice and hydrated with our condiments there. Add our celery and put those in between some bread and you're good. Enjoy. All right, Saturday night dinner. We're going to be making a chicken penne pasta. We're going to be using heavy cream, our white or yellow onions with a garlic, mushrooms, tomatoes, chicken, 
we have some thyme, salt, granulated garlic, and pepper, as well as our penne pasta. So we have water going in a big pot, which will salt. And then we're gonna add our penne noodles into there. And while those are cooking, we'll start uh, searing up all of our, our items that are gonna be mixed with this pasta. Let's get that in there and stir it around and try to keep our pasta from sticking together. Toss some oil in our pan there and get our mushrooms in and start cooking those. You know, there's a really big difference between like cooked mushrooms and mushrooms that like get like a nice sear on them. I don't know what it is. It's just that little bit of sear like adds so much more flavor. So if you can accomplish that, please do. It's definitely going to help out your dish in the end. So while those things are cooking, once you feel like you got a nice good color, a little oil, split those to the side of the pan, open up a center and we'll add our chicken. We'll go ahead and season with our salt, pepper, granulated garlic and thyme. Check our pasta there on the side. Uh, notice I just pulled a little pasta water out. That's just to reserve it, um, to add back into our dish. And one thing I didn't mention is that we're actually going to be using a cornstarch slurry with this. We were running a little bit low on our heavy cream. It wasn't quite enough to grease up all of our pasta and everything else that we cooked. So once we get our heavy cream to a boil there, we're going to add um, a little cornstarch slurry, which is basically cornstarch put into a little cold water and mixed until it's all an aqueous solution. Cornstarch is just, just a thickening agent, so it's just going to give it a better feel and just stretch out that cream to cover our pasta better. And make sure you season your cream as well, a little salt, pepper, once we feel good about it. We'll mix everything up and that's going to be dinner. We'll garnish that with some fresh tomatoes. After making this, that whole box, we had enough for probably two more meals left over, so... It's gonna be quite a bit of food, which is a good thing. So we got, got a little garnish there, and, and that's it. That's our Saturday night dinner. Easy. All right, Sunday morning breakfast. We're gonna be making French toast with bacon. Uh, it's gonna be topped with bananas again. So we'll take a look. We need our vanilla, four eggs, two bananas, four slices of bread, our cinnamon, nutmeg, and we are out of our heavy cream, so we're just gonna sub for a little bit of uh, whole milk. But it'll still work out. And we do have three pieces of bacon, which one piece of bacon went missing somewhere along the week. Could have been four, but there's three pieces there, so one and a half each, not bad. Also could have maybe only gotten 19 pieces from the, from the meat counter instead of the 20, but that's all right. So a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract, a dash of cinnamon, a dash of nutmeg, and we're going to do a splash of, of whole milk in there. And we're just going to whisk everything up until it's nice and mixed. And in that same pan that we just cooked our bacon in, just give it a quick rinse out while it's hot under water and just blast everything off. And we're just going to toss some butter in and cook up our French toast. A little bit of oil in there, that fat kind of helps helps cook everything evenly and gets you a nice French toast color on there. A little flip action. And that's that's about it. Go ahead and plate this stuff up and enjoy. Don't forget about those uh, bananas. Slice those guys up and we can set those right on top. And that's it. A little bit of a little bit of syrup on there as well. For our Sunday lunch, we have some leftover pasta that we're going to take advantage of as well as anything else that we have that's kind of leftover um, that's already kind of pre-made. So go ahead and take advantage of some of that stuff. For the evening, we'll be making some pork rice and bean burritos. All right, so we're going to skip this lunch since we're doing the leftovers, and I'll see you back for dinner. All right, Sunday dinner time. We're going to be doing pork, rice, bean burritos. 
Take a look at our ingredients here. We have tortillas, our shredded cheese, sliced jalapenos, the other half of those diced tomatoes, diced red onions, cilantro, our leftover beans, rice, and pork. We'll get going by starting to saute up our pork here. And the idea is that we'll toss it in there, season it with a little salt and pepper, and try not to move it too much. Again, we want to get some color on our pork. That's really where a lot of that flavor comes from. Swap out that lid for a little grease guard. That way that moisture can escape our pan. But it should maybe take about seven, eight minutes or so of cooking before we kind of start adding in other stuff. So you can see we got some color on our pork there. Go ahead and toss our black beans in with a little bit of water. We're gonna scoop in some of that rice. I'm not using all the rice. I'll probably end up tossing some of it, but you know, if you're hungry, if you want to save it, use it. It's always nicer to use stuff up. But we'll go ahead and top that with some of our shredded cheese. Once that kind of gets melty, we're gonna toss in our onions, some diced tomatoes. Then we'll finish it off with some scattered jalapenos, sliced jalapenos around there. And while that's working, we have our little side uh, pan over there getting hot. And that we're just going to be warming tortillas up to wrap our burritos and then also using it to, to sear our burritos up. So you can see everything in there is hot and ready to go. We'll go ahead toss some of our filling into our tortillas. We're gonna set that back down. We're just gonna add a little bit of oil. That's just gonna help um, sear that up and get a nice golden crisp to it instead of it just burning up. And that's that's really it. We're just gonna do that over and over until, until we got two burritos for each of us. So we're gonna pull out our sour cream Throw a little bit on the plate there. Ooh, fancy. Look at that. Just like the restaurants do. Not really, but that's it. Dinner. Sunday dinner. If you're like me, cover that. Cover that with some Cholula, and you're good. Well, thanks for watching for the week, guys. I hope this was helpful and informative, and, and you made some good food, and hopefully save some money on the amount that you might normally spend. So enjoy guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. So we got through our week. Um, the only thing that we really missed out on was our Sunday lunch, but I think you could figure that out considering that we had leftover pork, leftover chicken, leftover rice, leftover tortillas, leftover sour cream, you know, a couple other things. I'm sure we could throw something together for that. Um, and our leftover pasta as well, which is already made. And then when we were done with our dinner on Sunday, we also had a bunch of leftover stuff from our burritos. So I think you can manage that that one uh, lunch without something. Um, throughout the whole thing, uh, one thing I can tell you that I found harder um, was having three meals a day. That's not something that I typically do. I know a lot of people out there do do that. But for me and my wife, it just it seemed like almost we were just always eating, which to me wasn't as enjoyable as you might think. So in the future, we will probably cut down quite a bit of that. Maybe instead of like a full lunch, just go with like a snack or something like that or something smaller. Or go with a full lunch and skip breakfast. Maybe just grab a banana or, you know, something really easy that's not as filling um, and go. We're kind of more of like a coffee in the morning, take off, and then do a lunch type anyways. But that's totally us, and you guys can do whatever you want. But overall, we thought that the food prep for the week was a success. Um, and that we weren't really wanting a lot of extra stuff, which I guess is a good thing, though sometimes it seemed like just cumbersome and a little bit like overwhelming to try to eat a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It just doesn't really work with our lifestyle, but it might with you guys. And if you have kids, it's probably going to be uh, better for people who have like, you know, teenagers and stuff like that who they, you know, they need to eat all the time, but it just didn't work the best for us. So moving forward, we could probably cut our budget back even more. So, um, because we're probably going to be skipping one of those meals. We don't necessarily need that three meal a day. 
Um, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate any feedback. That if anybody wants to give feedback, just leave that in the comments section. Um, and if you liked it, hopefully you hit that like button and subscribe. And thanks again so much for watching. You guys have, have a great day. Thanks.